Hey everyone, welcome back. As you can see, a few days back, I just received this email. Uh, it was shared to me by Sambit. He basically gave an interview for a data analyst in a product-based company. And this was the problem that was asked to him. So in this video, let's try to understand this problem statement and then try to solve this particular problem. So as you can see, we have been given a table by the name billing. It consists of the following columns. So there is a customer ID, customer name, billing ID, billing creation date and build amount. Now what they are asking us to do is display the average billing amount for each customer between 2019 and 2021. Assume $0 billing amount if nothing is billed for a particular year of that customer. Okay. Now, for example, they have given us this sample data as you can see here. So the sample data basically has, I think, information about three different customers and there is some billing amount for a particular year mentioned here. Okay. And there is the expected output. So we basically need to segregate the data for each customer and find the average billing amount. Now, when doing so, there are two things that we need to remember. First thing is we only need to consider the billing amount which falls between these three years. Okay. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, if for a particular year there was no billing done for a customer, we still need to consider a zero amount for that particular year. Now to better understand this, there is a formula that they have shared and let's try to understand that. So let's look at the customer A. So for customer A, you can see that we have three records, meaning that there are three billing uh, amounts. So two of these billing happened in 2020 and the last billing happened in 2021. Okay, so there was no billing done for 2019, right? But still when we had to find the average, we still need to consider zero amount for 2019 and then 100 and 150 in 2020 and then the 100 billing amount that happened in 2021, okay? So for this customer, there is totally four billings. So we, in order to find the average, we need to divide it by four because this is the number of billings that is present for the customer and hence we are getting the average of 87.5. Right now, similarly for customer B, I can see that I have a billing for 2019, 20 and 21. So I just need to sum all of them three together. That is 150, 200 and 250 uh, divided by three and I should get the amount. But here I can see that there is a small typo. So for example, if I add 150 plus 200 plus 250, that is I think 600, right? It should come to 600 and 600 by three should be 200 and not 150. So here the expected output is mentioned as 150, but I think it's a typo, it should be 200. So it can happen when you face an interview, you, if you find uh, the problem statement has some typos or some issues, you can definitely uh, tell that uh, to the interviewer. Okay, in this case, I believe depending on the question that is asked and the data that is given, the answer here should be 200. So we'll try to find write a query which is going to return the correct answer. And then for customer C, we can see that there is a build amount for 2018 which we should basically ignore. And then we have 2019 and 2021. So there is no amount or there is no billing done for 2020, but we still need to consider that. So we have zero plus 250 plus 300 divided by three, that is 183.33. So I hope you understood the problem statement and you understand what we are supposed to do. Now, this is not a very complex problem. I believe this is a basic to intermediate level problem, but if you are a fresher or even if you are, let's say two or three years of experience, this kind of questions you can expect. Okay, so in order to solve this, I have created the same table in my PostgreSQL database. I'm using the PG admin tool. So I have created basically the same table and with the same data. Okay, now I'm going to write a query to solve this particular problem. Now, before I can solve this, let's look at how I can solve this particular problem. So there are two things that I need to do, right? One, I need to consider these three years. And the second thing, if there is no billing for a particular year, then I need to consider a zero amount. Okay. Now straight away, if I consider this customer A, since there is no billing amount done for 2019, you might think that I would want to have a dummy record inserted for this customer A for 2019 as the amount zero, right? Maybe not a record into the table, but through your SQL query, maybe you can do that. Okay, but a more simpler way of solving this kind of problem would be by using the case statement. Okay, now I'll tell you why. So you can see that I have multiple records for a customer, but in my output, I just have one record for each customer, right? That means I need to group the data based on each customer. And when I'm grouping the data, I need to sum up this amount and I need to consider the correct years. Right? So what I can do is I can group the data based on each customer and then probably I can have 
a separate column for each year. So I can have the build amount for 2019 in one column, the build amount for 2020 in another column and the build amount for 2021 in another column. Okay, and then maybe I can try to sum them all together. So let's try to do that first and then see uh, if it actually works. Okay, so straight away what I'll do is the columns that I need are I need the customer ID, right? And I need the customer name, right? And the next thing that I need is I need the amount for each of the years, right? So I also know that I need to group the data for each customer. Right. So straight away what I'll do is I know that I need to have data only one record for each customer. So I know that I will need to do a group by here. So I can just say group by customer ID and customer name. Right. And the next thing is I want to have the amounts loaded into each column specific to the year. Right. So what I'll say is case when billing creation date is equal to uh, let's say 2019 okay now this is a date column in order to fetch the year from it i need to use some functions you can use maybe some other functions but i'll use the two care function so from two care i'll just extract the year from here and if the year that is from this particular column is 2019 okay then i want to consider the build amount build amount okay else so let's say for this particular customer the customer a there is no entry for the year 2019, right? In that case, this will never get satisfied. So if there is no amount or no billing done during 2019 for a customer, then I still want to consider a zero value, right? And that is why I'll have a zero here and I'll end my case. And I'm going to name this like, let's say, some underscore 2019, okay? And I'm going to do the same for the remaining two years. So here I'll just tell 2020 and 2021 and here as well 2020 and 2021. Okay. Now if I run this, okay, so I'm getting an error. Let's try to fix that. Okay, so the error that I'm getting here is because I have grouped the data based on customer ID and customer name. And the rule about group by clause is that every column that you mention in your select clause needs to be present in your group by clause, right? In this case, or you can have columns in your group by clause. And if you want to have any other columns in your select clause, then those columns needs to be inside the aggregate function. So in this case, the billing creation date is a column, but it is not inside any aggregate function. Hence, SQL is expecting to have this column inside the group by as well. Okay. But we do not want this to be present in our group by because we need to group the data only based on each customer. And that is why I'm going to put this whole thing inside my aggregate function. Okay. And I will be using the sum aggregate function. The reason for that is I know for some of the customers for a particular year, there can be multiple records, right? For customer A, as we saw here, I can see there are two buildings for 2020. In that case, under my 2020 column, I need to sum these two amounts together. So 100 plus 150, I should be getting 250 under 2020 for the customer A, right? So what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to uh, put a sum. So I'll just copy this, I'll copy this, I'll copy this. And I'll basically I'm putting the sum aggregate function inside basically outside the entire case. And now if I run this, now you can see that I have basically got the output and this output is looks right. For example, let's say if I'm taking my customer A for 2019, he's getting zero. And if I go back to my input, for customer year 2019, it should be zero because there is no billing for 2019, right? But when it comes to 2020, he's getting 250. So for 2020, it is 100 plus 150, that is 250. So I hope you understand that. And for 2021, for customer year, he's having 100. And I think that is exactly what is present in our input data as well. Okay, so I hope this is clear and I hope you understand why I have done this, okay? Now, the next part of this query is basically to find the average uh, billing amount for each customer, right? Now, in order to find the average billing amount, I basically need to sum up all of this amount for all the three years and then divide it by, divide it by the number of billings, right? Now, how do I find out the number of billings? right basically what i can say is if i go into my input data number of billings is basically the number of records right additionally if there is no billing for a year i should also consider that particular year record as well additionally right so for customer a the number of billings should be three 
plus 1 that is for 2019 so it should be 4 right so all of that amount i should be dividing it by 4 in order to get the correct average so in order to find the billing number of billings okay and since i told you number of billings would be the number of records okay in additionally i also need to consider any missing year okay how i can easily do that is by using the count function okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy all of this exactly and i'm going to paste it here and here instead of using the sum i'll just use count okay and i'll use count here i'll use count here okay and for now i'll just keep everything as it is okay and let's see how the output would look and here i'll just change it to count this is going to be count and this is going to be count okay and if i run this now you can see that i am getting some value in my count column but all of them are three the reason why all of them are three is because when i'm doing this case statement if this condition is successful if for a particular customer there is a billing creation date for the year 2019 then this will get printed if it is not having any 2019 billing then zero will get printed in both the cases either this value gets printed or zero value gets printed okay now what count function will do is it's just going to count how many records values are getting displayed right or are present right so in this case all the three uh, records because each customer is having three records here all the three records will get some value either zero or the actual billing build amount hence it will always return three now what i want is i only want to count the record if there is basically a valid record which satisfies either 2019 20 or 21 for each customers right i do not want to have this zero here instead of zero i'll have it null okay and in fact i ca i do not even want to have this else null here uh, so either i can remove this else null completely or i can just put a null i'll put a null here just to explain you the concept a little better okay now if i just execute this okay so i have just removed basically replaced the zero with a null because zero is a value for sql but null is actually not a value okay and the count function will treat zero to be a value so it will consider that to be a record but null is not a record it will not consider that okay you will better understand this uh, when we see the data so you can see here now i have everything is zero 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 and now if i run this now you can see that i'm getting actually the current number of records okay that is correct number of count okay now if you are not sure of why this works let me just explain you the concept of count real quick okay so just that you don't have any confusion so i'll just i have created a table uh, that is a test table so select star from test okay and if you see in my test table i have five records right and it's a column id and i have three records are having the value one two and three and two of the records are having null right now if i do a count of let's say star okay and if i run this you can see that it's going to tell five because there are five records okay similarly if i do count of one okay it's going to return five because one is a value so it's basically uh, it's going to return how many uh, records are getting returned here okay if i put zero also it's going to be the same so that's exactly what is happening here since i'll have if there is no records matching with 2019 zero gets returned count of zero will still kind of do the same thing that i'm doing here so it will return five records okay but let's say instead of any value if i put the actual column name okay in this case what it will do is when i run this it's returning me three because in the id column only three records were actually having some value two records were null nulls will not be considered by the count function okay and this is exactly the concept that is being applied here so whenever there is no uh, build amount or any uh, record for 2019 null gets returned it will not be counted by this count function so when i run this now you can see that i'm getting the proper count i hope this is clear now additionally there is one more thing that i want to do because i know for the customer a so let's say for this customer a uh, 2019 there was no build amount but still i'm treating an amount of zero here because this is what was told to us in the problem statement and in this count also it is returning as zero but i want this count to be one because what i basically want to do is for each customer i want to sum all of this amount and then divide it by the sum of all this okay in this case for 2019 also i need to treat it like there was one billing because i have given zero here as the billing amount right so this should be one one plus two is three three plus one is four so this 250 plus 100 is 350 350 divided by four should be some value i think 87 or something 
right? So this is what I need to do and I'll try to do this in the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to do is either I can put this into a subquery or I can basically create a CT with, uh, I'll use CT because it becomes more easier to see uh, and also to explain and also for you to understand. So I'll just move this to the right, I'll put this inside the parenthesis. Okay, and then here I'll query the data from my CT, select star from CTE. Okay, and here I'll just tell, I'll fetch these two columns. Okay, the customer ID and customer name. The next thing that I want to do is for each customer, I want to sum all of these three columns, right? So I'll just put the sum of all these three columns. So sum of 2019 plus sum of 2020 plus sum of 2021. Okay, and then divide it by I want to divide it by the sum of basically the sum of all of these count values for each customer, right? And wherever there is a zero, I want to replace it with one. So in order to do that, what I'm just going to say is I'll copy this column name that is count of 2019. So I'll say count of 2019 uh, plus. Okay, but before I do that, if this count value is zero anywhere, then I want to replace it. I want to replace zero with one, right? So I'll do that by using the case statement. So I'll say case when this is equal to zero, then I'll say one else. I want to display whatever the actual count value is here present. Okay. So I'll end my case and I think that's all. And I'll just uh, and do the same for the other two years as well. That is for 2020 and for 2021. Okay, so maybe I'll just move this a little down. Okay, and I'll do this for 2021. Okay, so I think that's all. And maybe I'm just going to name this like average bill amount. Okay, and now if I run this, you can see that I am getting the average for each customer. Okay, maybe they are not sorted. So I'll just do order by one. So this one basically means the first column in my select that is customer ID. So if I do this, now the data is sorted and I'm getting some value. But if I go here, I can see that I also have some decimal values, but the decimal values are missed here. The reason why they are missed is if I run this CT query, that is my inner subquery, you can see that all the data types here returned from this aggregate functions are big int, right? I want to convert them into decimal so that when the decimal, I will add them and I will divide them with the value. Hopefully I'll get the decimal uh, value as my output. So in order to convert these values into a decimal data type, I'll just use this double colon symbol. Okay. If you're using some other data um, database, maybe you can use cast. Even in Postgres, you can use cast, but this is pretty simple. So I'll just use decimal here. Okay. And now if I run this, now you can see that I am getting the decimal values. Okay. But there are too many uh, decimal values after the uh, point. So I'll just use the round function to just have two decimal points. So round of this and I'll say two and I think that's all. And now you can see that I am getting the output exactly what was mentioned in my um, problem statement, right? 87, 150 and 183, 87, 200 and 183. As I told you, the 150 is actually wrong here. It should actually be 200, okay? So I hope this problem is clear and I hope you understood this problem. So thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.